He took the Son of God, Jesus Christ, coming in the flesh. Because there were so many sons this morning to be brought to glory. Praise the name of the Lord. It took the blood of Jesus to bring us to God. It took the blood of Jesus to make us to be qualified. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians 2 verses 4, the Bible says, But God, who is so rich in mercy. When you read Romans, it says, While we were yet still thin as Christ, gave himself for us. He loves us that much that even if you are still in your sinful nature, Christ had already died for you. And so who are you? The redeemed of God. Who are you? The beloved of God. Who are you? A child of the living God. Praise the name of the Lord. We find our true identity in Christ. We find our true identity on the finished works of the cross. When Christ said it is finished, it means if they used to call you with a name that is not good, when Christ comes into the picture, he calls you beloved. He calls you my son. He calls you my very own. He calls you my daughter. Praise the name of the Lord. And so without Christ and that which he has done for the church, for the believers, you have no name. And that is why the devil would want to, you know, brand us with names that is not ours. It is expedient for every child of God to know who they truly are. You find your identity in the Lord. You find your identity in Christ. Who do you say I am? What does the Bible say you are? And whose are you? Because we have a set of people who don't know who they are. And they even don't know who they belong to. We are of Christ. When you read 1 John 4 verse 4. The Bible says ye are of God. We are of God. And I've come to remind us church this morning. We belong to God. The kingdom of his dear son. The Bible says he has redeemed us from the darkness that is in the world. And brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning when we are talking about who we are, our identity, we cannot talk about our identity without mentioning Jesus Christ. He has brought us to the kingdom of his dear son. It means previously we were in another kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. And then Jesus came and transferred us into the kingdom of light. So who are you? I am a child of God. Who are you this morning? I've been redeemed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's marvelous light. He says we are of God and we have overcome them. Who is them? Who is them? The devil. Who is them? Your enemy. Who is them? The devourer. And so if you know who you are in Christ, you have the power, you have the authority to overcome Every enemy of your life, praise the name of the Lord. If you know who you are, you have the power and victory over your enemies. He says, you are of God. First John chapter 4 verses 4. We are of God. And so if you've been confused about who you are in Christ, here is a charge this morning. You are of God. You belong to God. You are not of the devil. You belong to the kingdom of God. You belong to a kingdom of conquerors. A kingdom of people who succeed. A kingdom of people who are victorious. The Bible says Jesus prevailed and took the keys of the kingdom of darkness. And then he said, I have given you power. I have given you authority over everything. So we belong to a kingdom of conquerors. As children of God, when you understand who you are, you know that I belong to a kingdom of those who are not defeated. Praise the name of the Lord. In this kingdom of light, we are not defeated. The Bible says, behold, I give you power to trample over snakes and serpents and nothing can harm you. The kingdom of God, as children of God, we've been given power 
to trample on snakes and serpents power to trample on demons power to overcome every challenge power to overcome the situations of life praise the name of the lord that is who we are we belong to the victorious kingdom and so if the devil wants to toss you to and fro to confuse you about who you are remind him i'm a child of god praise the name of the lord I'm a child of God. And that is why we see Jesus Christ, while he walked his course here on earth, he kept on reaffirming who he was. One time he says, I am the bread of life. Anybody who eats of me cannot hunger. Another time he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Another time he says, I am the living waters. Another time Jesus comes to say, I am the good shepherd. So if Jesus Christ could affirm who he is, how much you are a child of God, should you affirm who you are and you find your identity in Christ? I am the beloved of God. I am the righteousness of God. I have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am victorious in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Praise the name of the Lord. Most times, the church does not teach people about who they are. And so we have a set of confused people who really don't know who they are. They just say, I'm born again, I'm waiting for rapture. Born again, I'm waiting to go to hell. But who are you? Who are you? Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Jesus himself said, while I'm in the earth, I am the light of the world. It means every place that I go to, I radiate the light of Christ. When I find sick people, I, I, I pray for them. I anoint them with the, the, oil, the anointing oil. And I, you know, I command health in their lives. I am the light of the world. Who are you? I am the righteousness of God. So every time you wake up in the morning, what is your duty as a child of God? To remind God who you are. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, cast is the man who hangs on a tree. So you are no longer cast. People say, I'm breaking generational curses. I'm praying against these curses. No, cast is the man who hangs on a tree. What did Jesus do? He went on the tree for you. And he says, you are no longer cast. You have been brought out of the curse. That the blessing of Abraham can come upon every child of God. That is who we are. Praise the name of the Lord. That is who we are. And so as a church of God, we need to set our focus on God. Because once we know our identity, you become dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. The moment you know who you are and you find yourself, Paul comes and writes, I, Paul, a bond servant of God, not of the will of men, but of the will of God. Every time Paul was writing his epistles to the church, he, he, he had to find his identity on who he is. I, Paul, am an apostle, not of men, but of God. Not of the will of men, but of God. So Paul knew himself. And that is why he wrote half of the New Testament. That is a man who knew himself, found himself in what Jesus Christ had done. The finished works of Christ. And so he says, I no longer live. The life I live, I live by the faith of Christ. And he says in another place, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That is a man who's found his identity. We have people who've been born again for 20 years, but they don't know who they are truly in Christ. But they come to church. Ask them who they are. Ask them about the new creation reality. They don't understand anything that Jesus has already done for them. Revelation 5.10, the Bible says, And he has made us kings and priests unto our God, who Jesus Christ, by his revelation of his ascension, death, and resurrection, he made us kings and priests unto God. And so as a child of God, be reminded. That's why when you read 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9, the Bible says, but you are a chosen 
a chosen. It means you've been called out of the world and brought into the kingdom of God's dear son. You are a chosen generation. Praise the name of the Lord. You are a royal priesthood. Every child of God is a priest by his own self. Every child of God has been legalized to, to become a priest through the finished works of Jesus. And so you don't have to wait for the priest to pray over you. You are a priest for yourself. You are a priest of your own life. You are a priest of your own business. You are a priest in your own home. You are a priest in your family. You are a priest unto God. The Bible says he has made us. It means once you become a believer, it is part of your inheritance. The Bible says we've partaken of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Part of that inheritance is that we are priests. And we have priestly duties to do. Whether you are a young person, you are a priest over your own destiny. You are the one who will pray yourself into places where God wants you to be. You are the one who will ensure that you don't remain in the same place that you are. And so you have to take on your priestly duties because you have the priestly oil of God on your life. And it says, he's made us kings unto God. So besides being a priest and being able to take on the priestly roles of a believer, you are a king unto God. We've been called into a kingdom where we reign. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody say we reign. When you read Revelation 5.10, it says we will reign, not in heaven, we reign on earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Being called to reign here. And so if you are not reigning, praise the name of the Lord. If you are not executing your duties as a king in your kingly position, then you are failing what Jesus, you are failing us in this kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are not standing in your kingly order, and speak to circumstances. Speak to situations as a king. You be the judge over your own life. You are failing us in the kingdom. Because God says once you are a believer. And you have partaken of this inheritance. Then you become a king. And you become a priest. So who are you? I'm a king. I'm a priest unto God. I'm not some weak person. That you can see. No. I legislate spiritual things. I am part of the kingdom of light. I have partaken of the divine inheritance of this nature of God. I am a son in the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says he brought many sons to glory. That is why Jesus had to die on the cross so that sons, people, church, children of God no matter the race, tribe, tongue, no matter, you know, the background can be brought to light. Can be brought into the knowledge of who they are. I've made you in my own image and likeness. This morning, that is the teaching. You have been made in the own image and likeness of God. So you are not less than God. You are not less than God. When he looks at himself, he sees you. He sees his beloved. Every time there was a validation from heaven, when Jesus was on the face of the earth, the Bible says after he had been baptized, the heavens were open. And then a voice came out of heaven that says, this is my beloved son. I'm well pleased in him. Can heaven say that about you? Praise God. Can heaven say that about you? That this is my beloved daughter. I'm well pleased in her. Can heaven say that about you? You need to ask yourself. As I'm going about my duties. As I'm living my life as a child of God. Am I the well pleased of God? Or you are just well pleased in the eyes of men. But heaven doesn't recognize you. You have to find your true identity in the Lord. Find your true identity in Christ. That way you get a validation from heaven that this is my highly esteemed son. I'm well pleased in him. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Why should a Christian find himself in Christ? Why is it important to know who you are? Number one, it gives you purpose. And not just purpose, it gives you clear purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible talks about Daniel in Daniel chapter 1 verses 8. I want us to read. The Bible is talking about young men who are without blemish. There was a charge that they find young men without blemish. Young men of the king's seed. And I want us to, you know, look at that. Daniel chapter 1 verses 8. He say, look for young men of the king's seed. Look for young men who have no blemish in them. Daniel 1.4, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom. Somebody say, that is me. And cunning in knowledge and understanding, and, and understanding science, such as had the ability to stand in the king's palace, in whom they might teach the land and tongues of the Chaldeans. Now I want us to go to verses 8 that I want us to talk about knowing who you are, your true identity gives you purpose. The Bible says, but Daniel. Somebody say, but Daniel. And then transfer your name there, but Winnie. Praise the name of the Lord. Say it to yourself, but Winnie. I am not hearing you this morning, but Winnie. Say it to yourself. Winnie purposed in her heart that she would not defile herself with a portion of the king's meat. Let us read Daniel. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's move to verses 12. He says, prove your servants. I beseech thee ten days only, and let, us, let them give us pearls to eat and water to drink. Then our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the king's meat. And then let's go again now to verses. And at the end of 10 days, 15, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which ate the king's meat. Praise the, praise the name of the Lord. After Daniel had been chosen to be part of the team that was going to be standing in the presence or in the palace, in the presence of the king, the Bible says when he came to his turn, he did not accept to defile himself. The Bible says Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat. Why? This is a man who knew himself and he knew his God. Praise the name of the Lord. He knew who he was first as Daniel. He purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat. So that gave him purpose because he understood from where he came from and who he belongs to and who he is. Praise the name of the Lord. Daniel had clear purpose. And so when you know yourself, you have purpose and you have focus. You will not be tossed to and fro by strange things, by the things of this world. You will not be tossed to and fro by evil doctrines. Because why? You found yourself in the light of the scripture. You found yourself in God. You found yourself in Christ. You cannot be, you know, tossed. You cannot be confused. And so when the enemy wants to speak to you, a language of defeat, a language of failure, a language of, you know, lack, what do you say? I know who I am. I know who I am. I am the righteousness of God. I know who I am. I am a child. I am a child of God. What was the qualification when they were bringing Daniel into, you know, this recruition that was happening? One of the things that they needed is one who was from the king's seed. And us, we belong into a kingdom of royalty. That is why he says he has brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's the kingdom that we have partaken from, the kingdom of God. So we are of the king's seed. We've partaken of God's divine nature. We are of the inheritance of the saints. And so when Jesus Christ, when God is looking at Jesus, he's seeing many sons. He's seeing you and me. We look alike. We are children of God. 
together we are sons of the living God. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you know yourself, you have a clear purpose. This is my purpose. I exist for this. I am here to do this. You will not allow the devil to give you a mind that is not of heaven. To give you a mind that is not of Christ. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. Because why? We are children of God. Why does it say we have the mind of Christ? We are the children of God. And so I don't think Christ can be thinking mediocre. I don't think Christ can be thinking small about himself. I don't think Christ can be thinking that he's defeated. No, I don't think Christ can be thinking small things. But why do we think mediocre sometimes? And you think small things. You think, you know, you are small. You are just a small person. You cannot do this. It is only the men who can do that. Who told you? When it comes to being sons of God's dear son, all of us are partaken into that nature. Whether you are a woman, whether you are a man, we've been called to be sons in this kingdom. And when he's saying we are kings and priests, it is not just for the male, you know. Praise God, women. <laughs> Praise God. I'm about to finish. When you know yourself, you have victory over the devil. First John 4, for ye are of God, you have overcome them. That is what happened with Jesus Christ. While he walked his course here on earth, the Bible says he was able to defeat the temptations of the enemy because Jesus understood who he was. Kept on affirming, I am, I am as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. He kept on affirming, I have been, you know, I've been, I'm sent here on a mission. I have, I have my father. He bears witness over me. And so Jesus kept on saying, you know, I am the living water. If you drink of me, you will thirst no more. He kept on saying, I am the door of the sheep. He kept on saying, I'm the good shepherd. All these things. He reminded himself who he was because he needed to. He needed to, praise God, so that the devil has nothing against him. He says that the, the vara has nothing. He's coming, but he has nothing against me. And even as the church of God, even as you as a child of God, you need to know who you are so that the devil will have nothing against you. Amen? The devil will have nothing against you. Why? Because you know who you are. He says, I've given you victory. I've given you authority. I've given you power. Use it. Execute that power as a child of God. Use it to change circumstances. Use it to change your life. Use it to defeat the devil. Why? Because Christ has given it to us. And so you have victory over the devil. The Bible says he prevailed over the enemy. He went to the pits of hell. He took away the keys of the, you know, of darkness and, you know, trampled over, over the devil. The Bible talks about him making a public spectacle over them. The Bible says him conquering. Why? Because he knew who he was. When you are, you are able to overcome anything in life. When you know who you are and whose you are, I am of God. The Bible says you are of God, little children. John is reminding them, you are of God. And so you have overcome. You have the, you know, the spirit of victory in you. The spirit of winning in you. A conquering spirit. Because why? You are of God. Number three, we are about to pray. When you know who you are, you know your identity in Christ. You are able... I've talked about victory. I've also talked about purpose. And then this last one, you are able uh, to face the issues of life. You are able to face the issues of life because it gives us power and authority to be able to overcome the issues of life. Let us read Luke 15 verses 11. That is a, a story of the parable of the two sons. One knew, we won't read it all, but... We've heard about the prodigal son. A man had, a rich man had two sons. The Bible says, one came to him, give me every property that belongs to me. He went away, squandered it, and then came back. When he came back, because he knew who he was, he was his father's child. The Bible says he was, be, he was able to be accepted back, and his father gave him a warm welcome. Because why? He knew who he was. And so even if he went out to defile himself and came back, the other foolish son was there. 
He was not using anything that, you know, belonged to his father. He was just seated. And so you can be there as a child of God. And you don't know the privileges that belong to you. You don't know the rights that you have. You don't know that which Christ has already given, given to you. And so you are not able to tap into the blessings and promises of God. You are not able to, you know, gain that access to handle the issues of life. Because why? You are like that other son. He was just seated. His brother took his, prop his father's property. The Bible says he squandered and went, came back, was accepted. Because that boy knew himself and knew his father. I know my father. I will go back to my father. I know my father. When you know who you are and who you are, you are able to execute and use every privilege, every right, every promise that is in the scripture that is meant for you. And make it to work for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Make it to work for you. Or else you will sit and other people are enjoying the blessings because they know who they are. You will sit and other people know how to partake of this inheritance. But you, you are just there. Year in, year out, same level, you know, same, you know, person. Other people are getting into places in God. You know, they are using the Bible and it's functioning for them because they know who they are. And they know their privileges. They know their rights. They know that which belongs to them. They know all the promises that God has, uh, you know, assigned for them. And they know how to make those promises to work for them. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know about you this morning. I don't know whether you know that you are really a son of God. I don't know whether you know that Christ has given you the very promises that are found in scripture. That you are supposed to be making them to work for you. I don't know whether you know that Christ has already purchased your redemption by his blood. I don't know whether you understand that you are beloved by God. You don't need people to love you. God already loves you. I don't know whether you know that you have a father who cannot fail you. I don't know whether you understand that God is too faithful to leave you. The Bible says I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to the end. I will be with you. I don't know whether you understand. That you are the child of God. And he loves you. And he gives you validation. Every other time he says you are my beloved. You are the apple of my eye. You are my only begotten. Just like he said to Jesus. He is saying to us the church. You are my only begotten. If only you would know. That I love you. More than anything else. I love you. That's why I have sent my only son. He didn't come with the blood of bulls or rams. The Bible says he came with his own blood. And then he went to the cross. He said it is finished. He went and said it is done. Let them be free. Let them have liberty. Why? Because he loved us that much. Because he loves you that much. And he has given us a name that is above every other name. The Bible says at the mention of his name. Every knee. House. Every tongue confesses. What do you confess? Jesus. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. It is expedient. It is very important. I've come to remind you this morning that as a child of God, you need to know who you are. Finding your identity in the finished works of Christ. Finding your identity in that which has already been done. You will not need the validation of society. You will not need the validation of people. Because once you know who you are, you become courageous to execute the purposes of God over your life. Once you know who you are, you will not fear whether things come that are tossing you to and fro. You find your stand in Christ. You don't compromise because you know who you are. You will not be shaken. The Bible says we have a name that is a strong tower. We keep on running to that name and we are safe. And so when we know who we are, we understand that it is not us. By him we live. It is the faith of God that is working in us. And so if you are out of Christ, you are nothing. If you are out of Christ and that which he has already done, 
you can't find yourself outside of Christ. People will call you names. People will tell you you are this. They will tell you you are that. But if you don't find your stand in the Lord, you will be confused. That's why we need to find ourselves. Who does God say I am? What does scripture say I'm able to do? Who am I in Christ? And what am I able to do? Some of us, it's because we have not found ourselves. And so we've been limited into places where we are not even supposed to be at. Because you don't know who you are. You don't know that you are a king. You don't know that you are a priest to God. And so you allow people to define you and to hold you in positions that you are not supposed to be at. Some of us, if we would have found ourselves, we could have been reigning in life. Praise the name of the Lord. Who told you that it is the heathen? Who are supposed to be occupying those offices in the government? Who told you? The Bible says we are the sons of light. We become carriers of God's own dear. It means, you know, as the light is shining outside, it cannot be hidden. He says you are a city that is set on a hill. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does a man light a lamp and put under the bush. So you cannot be hidden. Because there is something. The DNA of Jesus Christ, if you cut me, you'll find Jesus. You'll find his word in me. Because why? I know who I am. I don't know about you. Do you know who you are this morning? Do you know what you are able to do? The life you are living is not by yourself. It's not by your strength. You are who you are because of Christ. And that which he has already done. It means out of him. You are nothing. That's why Paul says, the life that I live, I no longer live. If you go to look for Paul of Tarsus, you will not find him. There is another being who has taken over me. That is the mystery of the new Christian reality. When we were, not with, when we were without sin, when we were not born again, it is okay for the devil to toss you. It is okay for the devil to tell you who you are. It is okay because you don't know. You have not seen the light of God. But when the light appears and Christ comes into your life, you become different. What does Corinthians say? Five, is it 17? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. What has happened? The old. Praise God. And so you are no longer that you know, they say lineage to you. One one jokangane. No. You'll find me in Christ. I may carry my father's DNA, yes, biologically. But then in the spirit realm, I belong to Christ. I'm a co-heir. The Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. What belongs to Christ belongs to me. The Bible says he became poor so that we may become rich. So if richness is ours, then that's what I'm taking. The Bible says it became a curse so that you may no longer be living and breaking curses and breaking this. What are you breaking? He became a curse. The Bible says cursed is the man who hung on a tree that the blessing of Abraham can come upon the Gentiles, can come upon you, can come upon your family, can come upon your home. And so if we know who we are, there are some things and prayers we will not be making here in church. Because you understand you are the light. You understand I'm a son in the kingdom. You understand I have been liberated. I have been made free. I am free in Christ and I'm free indeed. You are no longer a sinner. You are a saint because why? The blood of Jesus. Understanding who you are gives you purpose. There is one woman in the Bible. The Bible calls her Deborah. This woman arose to be a mother in Israel. Before we are told that she's a prophetess, she's a mother, she's a judge, we find I, Deborah. You have to find yourself first. Who are you? Deborah. A prophetess, a wife, a mother. All those things. Without finding who she is, she's not able to execute all those positions that she held. And so before you are a mother to somebody, before you are a father to somebody, before you are a husband to somebody, before you are a pastor, before you are whatever you are, before you are, you know, a CPA, call them. You are first a child of God. So through that is where every other thing finds source from. 
You are able to find strength to be a father, to be a, a king, to be a judge. Because why? You have found yourself in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And you're able to execute the purposes of God in your life. Why? You found yourself. Identity crisis is a problem that many children of God have. They have not found themselves. Identity crisis. If you're a young person, it's expedient. Find yourself. Nobody will tell you who you are if you found yourself in the word of God. Nothing, no situation. You may be an orphan. No, that's not who you are. You're a child of God. The Bible says it's the father to the orphans, the husband to the widows. You may be poor. You don't have money now, but that's not who you are. The Bible says he became poor so that we can become rich. So I don't have money, but I'm rich. I don't look like, but I know. Praise God. And so when you understand who you are, you are able to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The strength is not from yourself. The strength is from God. What you need to do, just know who you are. Find yourself. Find yourself outside of being all the things that you are. You may be a carpenter. Outside of being a carpenter, find yourself in God. Outside of being a boda boda rider, find yourself in God. Outside of being a mamamboga, find yourself in God. So as you cut your mboga, you know, I'm cutting this mboga, but I'm the righteousness of God. Find yourself in him. So that people will not define you by your circumstance. People will not define you by your level. People will not define you by your position. Esther is an orphan girl. But the moment she's brought into the light of God, she becomes a queen. Not because she's able to or she's qualified, but because she knew herself. She knew herself. So you can become anything in this world. Whether you are 50 years old, it doesn't matter. Whether you are 70, it doesn't matter. Whether you've been 50 years in salvation, that does not matter. Do you know yourself? Do you know yourself? Do you know who you are? Do you know what you are able to do through Christ? Do you know the promises of God that has been given to you? When he comes, he gives you a new name. The Bible says in John chapter 8, as I finish, there was a woman who was brought to Jesus. The Bible says she had been found in the very act. We are not told about the man that she was found with. It means this woman was disadvantaged. Where is the man that she was found with in the very act? But she's brought to Jesus. When they bring her to Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus called her woman. Where are your accusers? Where have they gone to? Society had branded names on her. Called her prostitute. This is an evil woman. Jesus, in the days of Moses, she deserves to die. Where is that man which she was found within the very act? Have you ever asked yourself? She was at a position where she's disadvantaged. Nothing is working for her. But when she was brought to Jesus, her name changed. Jesus called her. My beloved, go, I do not condemn you. When you find yourself, you will find that there's, there are some things that you should not even be listening to. There are some, you know, evil reports. People tell you this, they tell you this is happening. No, there are some reports you should not even be listening to. Because why? They are the reports of the devil. Bible says, whose report shall you believe? There are things you should not even believe as a child of God. Because of the place where you are sitting at, you are a king. You are a priest unto God. There are things you should not even be doing. But then we find ourselves of disadvantage. Like that woman, we have been branded names. We have been called different names. Some of us have been called barren. Some of us have we cannot do anything. Some of us, they've called us, you know, poor. Some of us, they've called us, we are weak. We are feeble. We are not able to do this. We can't. But what does the word say that you are? Whose are you? And so whose report will you believe as a child of God? If he says that you are the apple of his size, if he says that he has imprinted you in the palm of his hands, that is what you move with. That is what you believe because you know 
I am not of this world. I belong to a kingdom that is not of this world. I belong to a kingdom of light. I belong to a kingdom of victory. I belong to a kingdom of winners. If we took on death, I cannot be defeated by anything in my life because I've come to understand that I am the child of the living God. I belong to God. I belong to God. I am qualified to be a partaker of God's inheritance. It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for the bishops. It's for every child of God who professes the name of God. And so if you are a child in the house, you are a child in the kingdom, you need to partake of this inheritance. It says he has given us everlasting life. And while we are here on earth, our duty is to reign. I'm going to ask you again. Are you reigning as a king? Have you taken on your kingly position to execute things in your own home? Or you are waiting for the pastor, you know, to preside over you? Are you, are you? are you waiting to call the pastor when sickness comes? You are a priest unto God. Execute your priestly position. Execute your priestly position. Execute your priestly position. Yourself, you can pray and healing can come. Who told you you can't pray for healing? The very way you pray for food, God bless this way. Yes, you can pray. God heal this disease. Praise God. God take this cup away from me. God change my name. God help me. You can pray for yourself. You are a king and a priest. What are you? I am the redeemed of the Lord. Blood bought. Blood purchased. Redeemed of God. I've been brought near to God. I didn't have the qualifications to come to God. But Jesus Christ, by his own faith, went to the cross for me. And so I'm born again. I'm saved. I don't care about my past. Your past does not matter. What we care about is who are you now in Christ? Who are you now in Christ? I shine as a light in the world. I am a light carrier. I carry the light of Christ in my office, in my institution. Where I work, in my home, in my family, I am a light carrier. You have to know that you are blessing the radiance of Christ in you. And so even demons know, they say, Paul, we know. They, they talked to Jesus. Do they know you? You have to have a certain kind of confidence in you because you are a light carrier. I am reigning. I'm in charge. I have dominion. These are things you need to affirm every day. So I want you to rise on your feet. These are things that you need to talk about every day. I belong to the kingdom of God. I cannot be defeated. Begin speaking it. Who are you in Christ? Open up your mouth and begin talking to God. Speak who you are in Christ. Speak the realities of God in your life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am able to overcome the challenges of life. I am able to overcome sickness. I am able to overcome disease. I am able to overcome sin because I am the righteousness of God. Speak it to yourself. I have the victory. I have the power to rule and reign. I reign in my life in the name of Jesus. Speak it to yourself. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. I pray veil over the issues of life can you talk to God and remind him who you are this morning in the name of Jesus Christ Holy Spirit we thank you for who we are, we are truly the children of God, we are truly born of God, born of the incorruptible seed, we have the word of God living in us the incorruptible word of God we are children of truth, children of the light, I cannot be defeated, I move mountains I am able to do the impossible Possible in my life, I am able to do all things. I cannot be defeated. I am a son of light. I know who I am. I find my identity in Christ. I find my identity in the finished works of the cross. I am a victor. I am a winner. I am a conqueror. I am born of God. I have been redeemed. I am purchased by the blood. I am victorious. I prevail over every situation. I am able. I am very able to stand in the presence of God and execute my duty as a child of God. I am able. I can do all things. I can do all things. Christ strengthens me. 
from glory to glory. He gives me the power. He gives me the strength. He gives me the might. He gives me the capability to be able to live a life that is worthy of the calling to walk pleasing of my Savior. I am worthy. I am loved. I am chosen. Nobody can define me. I find my definition in Christ. It doesn't matter my background. It doesn't matter where I come from. It doesn't matter my situation. I am loved of God. I am loved of God. I am loved of God. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Above only. I can do all things. I am able. Well able. Well able. Through Christ in me. The Bible says Christ in me is my hope. Is my hope this morning. I can be able to overcome challenges because Christ in me. You live in me. You live in me. You live in me. I am yours, Lord. I am yours, Lord. Without you, I can't do anything. Thank you for the finished works of the cross. Thank you for that which you did for me 2,000 years ago on Calvary, giving me a name. I am called the righteousness of God. I am called the beloved of God. I am called a son of a living God. I'm a joint heir with Christ. Everything that belongs to Christ belongs to me. From today, I partake of God's divine inheritance, of his nature. I partake of it. Every promise of God that has been given to me, I receive it by faith because I know who I am. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be limited. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be limited. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be limited. Somebody say, I cannot be defeated. I cannot be limited. I can never be defeated. Nothing defeats me. If it didn't defeat Christ, it cannot defeat me. If it didn't defeat Jesus, it cannot defeat me. I am not limited to what society says, to what the economy says, to what the system says, to what the government says. I find my identity in the living God. I find my identity in Christ himself. I find my identity in his redeemed work and now I am a child of God I'm a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Child of God, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave. 